Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. So, um, uh, hopefully today will be better. Yesterday was bad. It took five tries and my coughing was just probably worse than it's ever been. So I started doing some research and apparently the prescription medicine I'm on, um, it's very exact. If you're not taking it exactly as prescribed, like the time, empty stomach, wait for this. <coughs> if you don't do all of those things, it effectively doesn't work. So I'm not going to edit even if it gets into a really bad uh, coughing jag because I was doing some more research and it was saying that um, the coughing reflex can get essentially spoiled if you just cough too much. So you start coughing over anything. So I need to get back to not editing even if there are major coughing uh, fits because I need to kind of train myself to not cough as much. Before we start, First Kill graphic novel. Um, uh, very exciting. Uh, my cover should be done, it's Sunday, this week. And then it's getting <coughs> lettered and then print file for Rock and Roll Ninja this week. Jawbreakers Forever should be next week, and then First Kill the week after that. So uh, very, very exciting. I also put this poll up on my uh, community post. It's not doing, It's pre I mean, it's pretty conclusive right now. So I said, should I do a last chance Indiegogo campaign for Jawbreakers Forever, which would include Cuffs, and Rock and Roll Ninja, since those books have either been printed or are about to be printed, or should I just fulfill all late orders and then offer those books as add-ons on future campaigns? And it's it's pretty resounding. So uh, usually I wait like 24 hours, but unless this radically changes within the next few hours, it's just gonna yeah, that's that's pretty <laughs> that's pretty conclusive right there. So this is Batman Gargoyle of Gotham number one. Uh, Written and drawn by Raphael Grandpa. That tells you to put the emphasis on that syllable. Raphael Grandpa, not Grandpa. And um, it's uh, written and drawn by him. Colored by Mateus Lopez. Lettered by John Workman. And edited by nobody. Just nobody at all. Now, it's kind of a trick question uh, because, um, weirdly enough, this is where the <coughs> <coughs> this is where the editor would go. Um, but they decided to set in stone forever the uh, variant cover gimmicks. Like, come on. Uh, now they have it at the end, um, but it's kind of a moot uh, point because um, nobody edited this. It was the official editors, Andrea Shea, group editors, Chris Conroy, Andy Curry, special thanks. I think he was the editor when this started, but this is this was so frustrating because I want the comic book industry to recover and be great and be successful, even if it's not particularly stuff I like. I hate that it has slowly ISIS executed itself over a period of about half of a decade. So when I found out about this project, I was very, very excited. And um, nobody's really talking about it at all. And um, <coughs> it had a terrible preview in Bleeding Cool. They literally showed the most boring pages. But uh, there's just, uh, there are uh, a couple of really cool ideas in here drowned out by the most formulaic cliche done a million times Batman shtick. So I've been a fan of uh, Raphael Grandpa for, geez, I was in the army, Mesmo Delivery. And um, I don't really think he knows uh, American comics, specifically Batman, that well. This is very by the numbers. I honestly think he just knows the last Batman movie and the Joker because like the DNA of this take on Batman is like 90% that. 
so just it's just so many things you've seen a million times oh this is a city a city of crime my name is dragnet i carry a gun anyone remember that so we've got a really good villain who's uh, inspired by those old uh black and white cartoons from 100 years ago and then we've just got like the most cliche batman stuff imaginable i mean the art is really good but like first of all this whole first person narration like this shit has got to go. It is so 1987. Like, we get it. You're a dark Avenger of the night and crime must pay. Like, think about how much more effective this would be with just nothing. With just this weird, cool guy in this awesome costume walking into this crime scene, looking around. You know he's a... You know he's intelligent. You know he's looking at all these things and cataloging them and comparing them. Like, you don't need all, like, it's so much narration. So this is a villain. Um, very cool design. i got to skip some of this so I, don't, so I don't show the entire thing. But, like, th this, was, this was the preview page in Bleeding Cool. Like, editors, <coughs> you have to do your fucking job. You can't let Jesus take the wheel. You have to edit. And editing is more than hiring, firing, and making sure that the pages are in order. Like, look at this page. Look at all of this. And it's just the most cliche, oh, the rich, they're bad. Poor people are good. Rich people have a lot of money. And, and that makes they're rich, but they shouldn't have so much money. I understand stylistic choices, but this is not something you want to share for a preview page. You just, it's a bad idea. Um, so we get, um, again, this is all just Batman 101. It's, it's stuff that's been done a million times. These conversations with a very, very Catholic James Gordon are um, just, just cliche, just absolute cliche. And it just keeps going on and on and on. Again, great art and just the most basic been done a million times but I don't think Raphael knows that because I don't think he reads a lot of comics I think he's just like oh Batman like in the movie I saw last year um, so it's God, this part was so he's like super it's like the most Catholic James Gordon ever um, but very cliche in so many respects and just just not guided in any way now at the end we get a pretty cool action sequence. We get to see uh, the car, and Raphael has two takes on Batman that are original. Actually, I guess three takes. And you might say, oh, three original takes. That's, that sounds like it just he just knocked it out of the park. He could, but again, just completely drowned out in the most generic, formulaic, cliche Batman scenes and dialogue and tropes you've ever seen. So... Again, I believe most of what he knows about Batman is from the last movie. It's very car intensive. It's a man and his car. And it's a really awesome car. Great design. In fact, one of my favorite parts is uh, he's talking about the car and he says, I spent half of my inheritance on this. I like the idea of a Batman who does not have infinite wealth. Um, but as you can see, this art is just freaking fantastic. The car is so cool. The take on the costume. So he makes it very much of a guy in his car, a cool guy in his cool car. And I love that aspect. It's also a blind car. It doesn't have any windshields because it has to be encased in metal. So he just sees through sensors that go into his goggles. That's cool. There's also a constant thing where he's saying like, turn up my uh, earpiece, turn down my earpiece. So it's very focused on hearing from his cowl and then being blind but seen in a different way. So those two things are very, like, original for Batman. There's another thing where he basically treats Bruce Wayne as like a storyline that he just wants to wrap up. He's like, yeah, this whole Bruce Wayne thing, it's a, it's a huge distraction. So I'm just going to kill him off. And Alfred is like, you're him. He's like, eh, kind of not really. I'm just going to, it's a huge distraction. I just want to be Batman all the time. Now, we have seen that in... Uh, the comics uh, several times but uh, I would say that part was done 
particularly well, most likely because Raphael just doesn't know it's been done before. You can tell when someone is excited about, a, uh, about an idea, and he's excited about that concept. Uh, so again, a good fight. My favorite, <coughs> my favorite part, Batman actually gets hit in the head with an anvil. Because again, it's a it's a villain who um, he's inspired by like old cartoons, and uh, so I, I can't find it. But that was one of my favorite parts. But um, uh, I mean, look at this. This looks again. Do you see right here? No dialogue, and it's so effective. Where you could have been like, "I'm a villain. I'm poor. Uh, rich people are bad." Rich people made me poor and they took all my money and then I was like, blah, 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 blah. Batman is not mysterious in this at all. He is not enigmatic. He is just a guy who is just blathering in your earpiece uh, constantly. Whereas this is great. This is the type of stuff. So um, uh, I know Chris Conroy is a, a bit of a goofball uh, online. Andy Corey is just a complete piece of shit. Andrea Shea, I'm not aware of her acting up but it doesn't seem that she is particularly talented or even really just paying attention um, uh, editors are more than just checking for typos although I have to say do you remember during the milkshake era there were typos in like every single comic I don't see typos anymore but I don't really read Marvel comics anymore I just remember when I started the channel, they were like in every single comic. Um, but a um, lot of potential. This could have been a really great book if anyone besides the artistic team would have given a damn or even just paid attention at all. So I'm interested. I am going to read the next issue. It is a recommend. Although that's mainly based on the ideas and the art, the writing. Oh, jeez. Just, just imagine the most trite parts of any episode of Law and & Order or CSI and just, come on, man. Like, you gotta be awake. <laughs> Jesus cannot take the wheel. Like, you have to do the job. Um, so, uh, anyway, uh, before I go... This poll will be up for at least a day, but honestly, if I don't see some changes soon, I get the message. It's it's, it's understandable. Um, so, yeah, it's pretty much the percentages are staying exactly the same. So it looks like the cough thing is uh, successful. I actually followed the directions exactly instead of just remembering at noon after I already had breakfast. And, like, <laughs> I just feel like... I feel like the medicine is like just landing in a stomach full of like egg omelet and be like, seriously, how, like, what am, what am I supposed to do? Like, what the hell? I need just an empty, like, well, come on. There's like a little area over towards the edge that I can work with. I have nothing to work with here. I need, let me do my job. So, uh, wow. It was a very stunning, uh, difference when I actually, uh, read the instructions and followed them uh, exactly. But um, first kill graphic novel. Oh, very exciting to be going to print uh, very soon. A New Kind of War. I sent off the backers list as well as the comps that go to um, William Jordan, the, criti the critical drinker. He gets, uh, he gets comps, so those will be sent to him. So uh, maybe he can know, show those off on his uh, show. And that'll be uh, a lot of fun. I'm going to get back to work. I'm going to go check out these uh, Rock and Roll Ninja lettering edits. Should be the final edits. I got some edits for the first 50 pages of job The Jawbreaker's Contingency. There was just a couple little, just two little things that still need to be corrected. And then once all of the first 50 pages of the line art are locked, then it can start getting colored. And then I'm also going to get back to my version of uh, the cover, although we're going to have to talk about that. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.